everyone today I want to show you a quick technique that you can apply to your junk journals your art journals your scrapbooks your mixed media and of course your card making as well and it's a DIY crackle effect now we're only going to be using two products for this on top of our cardstock it's so quick and simple I've done it for years and I've never really explained it on my channel so let's take a quick look at the technique up close now I have stamped over the background here I'm going to show you that stamp as well because it works so well with this sort of vintage crackle effect but I've got the beautiful cracks in the backgrounds there. Now the crack color depends on two different things and I will show you that in a moment. But as you can see, it's nice even cracks and you can control how large or how fine they are. Okay, let's jump straight into this tutorial. So to enable me to show you really clearly what I'm doing, I'm going to be working on black cardstock today. Um, I do actually recommend this. If you work on white cardstock and you're using a light colour paint, you're really not going to see that crack, those cracks through very easily. I'm also then going to be going with a pale colour paint. I'm going to use this ivory colour, which I did use for this one, but this one I worked on a craft cardstock. Now this is an acrylic paint, so I've got a few variations here, but I've got lots of colours. The brand is irrelevant. This is just a brand I have a lot of paint of, a lot of different colours of, but you can use any acrylic paint you wish. Now the next item you're going to need is a good glue. So this is just your white paper glue. I use the Creative Craft Products Book Binding Glue. This is my favourite. It's always to hand on my craft desk. And I've got something to spread the glue and the paint with. So the first thing we're going to do is dump a load of glue onto your cardstock. It's really that simple. Now, the more cracks you want, the bigger you want your cracks, the thicker you're going to want your glue spread out. So I've really put quite a lot on here, more so you can really see the effect. I'm going to just keep this to the centre of the page and then around the outside you'll still see the difference with the paint not going on the glued areas as well. So you can see that it's not actually just the effect of heating the paint that causes those crackles. Now this is the uh, bit that I don't enjoy so much and it's simply waiting for this to dry. So it's a good idea to prepare these sheets in advance of using them and then put on the paint colour as you want to use them for your project. Now you can heat set this but for safety's sake I don't recommend heating glue up. Now that has just started to dry enough so that when I apply my paint it's not all going to lift up. You are going to get some movement in the paint underneath unless you've let it thoroughly dry. Now if you let it thoroughly dry you will still get a crackle effect but I find the better effect is if you still leave it so it's tacky so that the un maybe there's a slight skin on it but the underneath is still wet. Now I'm going to go in with my acrylic paint. I've made sure I've shaken this so that it's all mixed up and I don't get that watery glue coming out first. And again, I'm going to put quite a good layer over the top. Now you can use a brayer, you can use a foam brush for this. I've just got a soft bristle brush here and I'm just going to very gently paint this over the top of the glue. Try not to disrupt it too much. Like I say, it's got a slight skin on it now, so it shouldn't move too much, but it's not actually fully dry. Now, as promised, I am going to go to the edge. You want to be aware of your brush strokes as well because those brush strokes are really going to be emphasised once we start drying this paint. So where the crackles appear, they may well start appearing along your brush strokes. So if you do particularly want your crackles to appear vertically or horizontally, just ensure your brush strokes are going the same way too. Now again, as I said with the glue, the thicker your paint is also, the thicker your cracks are going to be. So if you've got the time and the patience to do nice thick layers and allow these to dry, then you are going to have a beautiful, really deep cracks in your surface. So just putting my phone on here and leaving it for a few minutes, filming it, I've obviously sped this up for you. And then I started going in with my heat gun and very lightly from a distance, just warming the air around the paint to make everything start to dry and crackle. You can see those large cracks already starting to come into place. After a little while, I grew impatient and I took it away and I put my heat tool to it. Like I say, I don't, I'm not going to recommend on my channel heating up paints and glues, but if you're in a well-vented area or you can go outside and do this, it should be absolutely 
fine to do so uh, and this is the end result so this as you can see is huge this is really extravagant cracks huge amount of texture and we will look at this in detail at the end I'll bring you right up close to it so this is putting a thick layer of glue and a thick layer of paint over the top but let's try this once more because this might be too much for your project if you want smaller cracks let's try once more with a different color paint and let's see what we can do with a thinner layer so I'm going to do it on a smaller scale this time and again I'm going to put some glue down not quite as much as I did last time but I'm going to make sure there is full coverage all the way through no uh, brush marks with cardstock shown through now my paint my glue sorry is running out um, but I'm going to squeeze every last drop out of this bottle before I start on a new one I'm just going to wipe off my brush and I'm going to go with this beautiful shade, shade of green it's called Laurel from the Americana collection from Deco Art um, but it's kind of a sage green which is really popular at the moment now again I'm giving that just a few moments to allow it to start going tacky but I don't want it to thoroughly dry so the difference in movement between the surface of the glue and the surface of the paint as they're both drying is what causes that paint on top to kind of separate rather than move with the glue so it's really fun to try out different glues different paints and of course different cardstock surfaces and different ways of drying too to find your favorite there's so many different variants on this now this has kind of gone tacky so if I do this I don't get any residue on my finger but I do leave a slight fingerprint in the paint that's just about perfect I'm going to put this beautiful shade of green paint over the top again I'm going to put a decent amount there but nowhere near as much as I did with the last sheet so uh, I really layered it on super thick last time I'm going to go over the edge here again so hopefully you can just see those crackles uh, where the paint is and nowhere else and as you see on this one actually there aren't any crackles towards the edges I'm not worried about my fingers and my desk getting mucky this is why I have a sheet down a mat down on my desk so it can get painty and I can wipe it so I'm going to put that to the side for a second wipe this up and then I will pop the camera on that again so you can watch those crackles appear as you can see those crackles have started forming really quickly on the thinner layer they're much closer together they're much thinner they're much uh, smaller they are all clearly going in the direction that I did my brush strokes uh, and there's absolutely none around the edges where the glue wasn't applied so it's definitely the glue creating this effect and not just the heating of the paint now again I just had my heat gun on from a distance here just to warm the air around it to speed up the process for you it kind of looks like wood grain it's so beautiful so as you can see there's still some patches here that are damp uh, so they still need to dry but doesn't that look like wood it looks amazing it's so cool now you can go stamp over the top of this for a really distressed look you can do lots of fun things with this now you can see the difference there thick layer and a thinner layer in reality the thickness of those layers wasn't hugely different so definitely have a play and get a feel for the type the style of crackles that you enjoy using if you don't want all your cracks in one line you can go you can do different direction paint strokes over the top make sure you try that one out as well try out different colored papers on the background and your paint on the foreground as well now let's have a look at both of these up really close and in detail so first the large cracks this is almost like a peeling effect rather than a crackle effect I do still love it now you don't have to stick to cardstock for this you could do this on something like chipboard or MDF if you prefer it's not the cardstock that's moving or making the effect at all it is the paint the mediums and the, the glue under there so this is the larger ones and let's just bring in the smaller cracks as well so you can really see them like I say there's still a couple of damp patches on this they will dry they will air dry in time or I can take my heat gun to them the only issue with using a heat gun if you use it up close is that you can cause the bubble um, the paint or the glue to bubble and that then it does create texture it creates a fun texture but it might not be the effect that you are looking for um, it can also cause the glue to dry white and not dry clear too depending on the glue you're using 
So hopefully you've found this a fun technique to use and try out at home with very few supplies. Anything I have used, I'll make sure I've listed down in the description below. And I hope to see you again on my channel very soon for another technique video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.